introduce our next speaker, Monica Oliphant from Australia. Um, I can see Monica, are you with us now? Can you hear us and can you? Yes. Say something very good. A very warm welcome to you, Monica, to Australia. I, you are, I assume now in Adelaide. I am and a bit nervous about being first, I must say. And I have never shared my screen before, so I hope I do it properly. I'm sure you will. And I think just in case we also have the, the presentation, presentation here, so we could do that for you. Let me just briefly introduce you, Monica. First, we appreciate, we really do appreciate that you are here with us at this time of the day because it's late night for you. Um, you are now uh, presenting about Australia. Um, your background is not only Australian, of course, that is where you're living and working. Um, you are, but you have a, you've been working for, in particular, let me mention, uh, as a president of the International Solar Energy Society, so traveled a lot, a lot around the world for, com for solar energy, for renewable energy. And I know that you also personally promoting a lot of big supporter of community power and we're very happy to have you here. So if it works now, I would like to hand over to you. Um, can you tell, I have put my, on my PowerPoint and put it on my screen. Yeah. And I, <laughs> has it come up? No, you need to, there's a button on the bottom line, share screen. Yeah, I thought I pressed it. Um, I, uh, now it's starting, yes. There uh, we are. Now if you just go to your PowerPoint and uh, go on, on um, presentation mode. Yes. Which is in the, in the bottom. That's exactly very good. Good. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so good evening, good morning and afternoon. Just um, let me just say, uh, we can see now your presenters mode. So we yes. also see some of your... Um, yes, I don't know how to get rid of that. Um, the, the whole presentation is on my second screen, but it won't come over to my first screen. That's, but if you don't have anything uh, uh, secret as, as your remarks, then I suggest you just go ahead. Oh, oh Monica, okay. you can, on, on the top you can see display settings. On the top, on the second button on the top. Second button. The, uh, uh, on the top. Yeah, really? remote control. Yeah, just where you are, if you click there. Yes. Then. I've clicked on uh, remote control. Okay, now, well, then we can see it perfectly. I think it's okay if you do it like this. Uh, hide video panel. Uh, I will just go on, otherwise yep, yes. I'll waste your time. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so the Australian community energy sector is uh, reasonably young. It's been grown from virtually nothing to uh, over the last over the last ten years, and now there are about a hundred groups and uh, seventy projects uh, concentrated on predominantly the eastern seaboard. And the reason for that is only the states of New South Wales, ACT, and Victoria are the ones with renewable with community energy policies, and that's mainly for uh, remote areas. Uh, the majority of projects involve solar PV and the reason for this is that Australia is a very sunny country and about uh, 20 over 20 percent of uh, our, our people have rooftop solar and it goes up to 35.7 percent in Queensland and 35 percent in South Australia where I am and so people are very familiar with uh, PV and tend, most projects seem to uh, involve this. They tend to uh, uh, be uh, 
and not along the lines that uh, uh, Stefan uh, said that, that uh, there's a lot of bulk buy pro projects, which is with PV investment, which is more in the range uh, uh, of the uh, true community solar project for profits and not for profits and communities and donation type projects with revolving funds such as uh, Citizens Own Renewable Energy Networks Australia, which is a crowdfunding project which I am uh, involved with. There are only three uh, community wind projects in Australia of any uh, recent decent side and the uh, uh, oldest and the first one is Hepburn Wind, which uh, many of you know because it uh, got received a uh, WWEA uh, uh, award. It is a lovely project in which there is good community uh, participation and uh, there is uh, 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 then it provides a range of uh, community benefits such as energy efficiency and audits and so on. And just recently they have received another grant from the government to build the community uh, large solar farm of five to six megawatts. Another project that Hepburn Wind is uh, registered in uh, Victoria on the other side of the country in Denmark, not the Denmark, there is a community uh, wind farm. Uh, the population of this Denmark is only 2,000 people. It's a tourist area and the community got together uh, and with uh, just 100 shares and a government grant set up this community uh, small wind farm to uh, provide uh, in its renewable energy for the community. The largest pro uh, wind project and community one is the Sapphire Wind Farm. It is uh, uh, 270 megawatts, but uh, 100 megawatts, it's, and it's located in New South Wales, but 100 megawatts through a, uh, a reverse auction scheme, the energy of which goes to the Australian Capital Territory, which wishes to be 100% renewables by 2020, and it has in fact reached that goal. They have within their uh, remit that 20% of the community investment must uh, uh, occur in their auction projects, which seems to be happening uh, at present, and it is providing uh, several uh, community benefits uh, uh, Sapphire does to its community, predominantly in New South Wales. So I come to the 2020 crisis in Australia, which has been a big uh, crisis of a year so far. It has had the hottest summer on record, the highest maximum temperatures, uh, the fires have been all over the e eastern sea board the uh, South Australia, Tasmania, and uh, it has caused great devastation. And on top of that, uh, in February, uh, large rains fell, which put out some of the fires, but caused increasing devastation. Then to top it all was uh, COVID-19. We closed down our boundaries, uh, each state boundary and the country itself. And uh, this is uh, to extent, this has worked. And uh, down below, it, is, it came from today's newspaper, the red curve is Australia, we're flattening out. And there uh, were no new cases in Northern Territory, South Australia and ACT, and it's going down elsewhere. What is this, uh, uh, what have we uh, found out of this? We've found that they're uh, being in lockdown, people are looking to become more self-reliant and efficient, which may carry on afterwards. I changed the slide too quickly, but and load curves have uh, flattened uh, uh, across uh, each of the jurisdictions and uh, uh, job security, though, interestingly, in the fossil fuel industry is um, uh, 
uh, decreasing, but in the renewables, uh, things are, I think, looking up, will be looking up, even though our uh, supply chain of uh, uh, equipment has uh, come down. So as I said, we're looking to uh, energy self-security. And to sort of end it all, I want to talk a little bit about community batteries, which I believe will be the future way to go in some of the um, uh, community uh, power areas. In Western Australia, uh, in an area where there was, uh, there is very high penetration of PV, that it is in the utility's interest to prevent reverse flows. And so they have put in a community uh, battery in which uh, uh, people are paying $1.60 or $1.80 for six to eight kilowatt hours a day of storage. So they uh, uh, put in energy into the battery during the day and draw it out at night. We have a community energy uh, a uh, retailer which has 1,600 shareholders in New South Wales, which have just received funding to try a community share two megawatt hour battery and, and uh, peer to peer trading of the stored energy across uh, uh, customers to uh, reduce bills. And in South Australia, where I live, there are increasingly number of projects with virtual power plants. So the future post COVID-19, well, uh, what will it be? It'll be different to now. We'll become more self-reliant and self-sufficient within uh, and develop more microgrids or um, uh, a, a within a state or uh, the state itself will not look, will look to be put uh, together its own uh, uh, devices. And Australia plans to establish renewable energy zone, which may encourage more community power in these local areas. And there is community pressure uh, is required for some government stimulus packages of money to go to communities and renewable energy. And I'll stop there. Thank you so much, Monica. I really appreciate, I think this was a very good, uh, um, uh, start of an excellent first presentation telling us the situation from Australia in Australia, which I think is actually quite encouraging because also you have a federal government which is not really pro renewables. Uh, you've seen quite strong uh, growth rates, and it's very great to see also uh, the uh, growth in the in the community sector. And if I may make the humble remark that I'm glad that when we gave 2012 the World and Energy Award to the first community wind project. Uh, Hepburn Wind, that I think that, that created some additional also visibility for this approach, which is so important. So, uh, Monica, if you just uh, stay with us, please, and uh, yes. in case there are questions, we we'll come back to that. So far, I don't see any.